video will explain self-attention generative adversarial networks. Self-attention is a really popular mechanism that is gaining interest and popularity in deep learning. Self-attention was originally devised to help with uh, neural machine translation. But in this video, we're going to show how self-attention can be used in the generative adversarial network framework. So this is the overview picture of self-attention. You start with the convolution feature mask from the previous layer. So a convolutional layer, it convolves over a layer uh, like an image or a set of feature maps and it will output features of the dimension height by width by channels. So the idea of these one by one convolutions is to reduce the dimensionality of the channels dimension of the convolution feature maps. So for example, after a convolution layer, you might have 32 by 32 height width, but six by 64, 64 feature maps. After a one by one convolution as in F, G and uh, H, you would still have 32 by 32 height and width dimensions but you would now maybe have like eight uh, channels or feature maps. So F and G are, are extracted from the convolution feature map at the previous layer, and then F is transposed, they're multiplied together, and then they're passed through a softmax activation function to form the attention map. So what a softmax activation is, is it's an activation such that the sum of the outputs is one. So it's like a probability distribution. And this is really useful for forming the attention map with the different outputs. So the attention map, which again is a, it's like a matrix with the probability sum to one. It's a probability distribution over the different locations of the feature map that this model should be paying attention to at this layer. So this attention map masks the features from the H function. And this forms the self-attention feature maps O. Now the self-attention feature maps O are then just concatenated with the original convolution feature maps X. And this means they're just stacked onto each other by that channel axis. So it would be like if there was 32 by 32 by 16, you know, 16 channels or 16 feature maps in the convolutional feature maps. And then you might have uh, 16 self-attention feature maps of the same sp spatial resolution. So you have the self-attention feature maps are the, of the dimensionality 32 by 32 by 16 as well. If you concatenate them together, now you've got 32 by 32 by 32 with 32 by 32 height and width and then 32 feature maps. So one more time, just to get the idea of the attention map, because this is the key idea, self-attention, attention, this is the most interesting part of this presentation. So the attention map is a softmax distribution over which of the feature maps, the, this attention layer or the par parameters defining attention which features that it should look at for the for conducting these features for the ultimate task of generating images. And this is interesting because the way that we do GANs in images is with these upsampling convolutional layers. So what this means is you go from a 4x4 image and then you have these local convolutions. And a local convolution means it aggregates information from a neighborhood of three or five uh, pixels formatted in that grid structure. So it goes from 4x4 four four to 8x8 eight eight to 16x16, 32x32 by 32 by 32 to 64x64. 64 64. And then in the self-attention GAN paper, they go up to 128 by 128 resolution image net synthesis. So this, uh, this chart right here is from the paper and it shows where they add the attention block, the mechanism that we just discussed into the network. So again, going back to the DC GAN, it could be adding it on the 8x8 eight eight layer, you put the attention there, or the 16, the 32, but they don't put attention on every single layer in the network. So this shows that they get the best results when they put it on the 32x32. 32 32. And then on the right is the comparison between the self-attention blocks and the residual ResNet skip connection blocks. And this is just another way of propagating information forward. And the self-attention clearly outperforms it in every way in, in this experiment. So these are some of the results from the self-attention GAN. Pretty impressive uh, images synthesized on the 128 by 128 resolution on ImageNet. This is an example of how typically uh, image GANs struggle to make the dog be like anatomically correct. Like they, it might have like four dogs, but this is, I meant <laughs> four, dog, four legs. So this is an example of a dog which has been anatomically synthesized correctly. And this is an example of an image that still has some way to go, just showing that these results aren't completely perfect and is still not the state of the, art, state of the art, but this is a foundational idea for the big GAN model, which currently is considered the state of the art. 
So one other interesting thing they put in the paper is they visualize the attention maps. And what they do, the way that they do this, first of all, because doing this on something like the 32 by 32 layer, if this is where the attention layer is, and you're going up to 128, those features would hardly make any sense to visualize. But so what they do is they put the attention map at the very last layer, right before the output, so that uh, you know this visualization has some kind of sense to it. So there are some other details of the self-attention GAN if you're looking to implement it yourself. They use something called spectral normalization, two timescale update rule, they use these learning rates of the atom optimizer, and then two other things which are fairly intuitive relating to like conditional GANs and sort of the way that you really make GANs work in practice is that they use conditional batch normalization, which is just where uh, the gain and bias parameters of batch normalization are determined by the class label. So like if you're uh, synthesizing a dog, you would have a different mean and variance parameters for the dog images than for like the cat images or airplane or car or something like that. And then the uh, projection conditioning and discriminator is just a mechanism of where you put the conditional class label information. So thanks for watching this paper on I mean, presentation on self-attention GANs. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos, and the paper link is in the description.